Tonight's episode of the Sunday Night Talk is here. It's the end of the regular season. Me and Omar Carmona tackle all the games. The early, the late, the Saturday. Saturday was pretty exciting as a Raiders fan. Oh, wait. No, it wasn't. We got killed by the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes was half asleep. Still put up like 30 points. Hey, let's forget all about that. Let's get in a good mood. Speaking of good moods, I want to thank everybody who came out to the stand-up show this last Friday at the Muddy Paw. We had a great lineup. We had a great crowd. It was a unique venue as well, so I hope to do it again. Great laughs. I had a great time. More stand-up coming up as well, so pay attention to the feed. Speaking of the feed, if you're new to the Running It Back channel on YouTube, give it a subscribe. All my videos are up there right now. The Sunday Night Talk is running. We're in the heart of the season. We are tackling playoffs. Now, my stand-up clips are up there, not to mention a new episode of Opening Scenes is going up very soon. Me and Cousin Adrian have a special plan. Two more episodes of Opening Scenes on tap as well. But today on the show, it is the end of the regular season. Me and Omar hit the record button as soon as the Sunday Night game wrapped up Detroit at Green Bay. Detroit was a spoiler. I was impressed. Well, me and Omar talk about it. We talk about the games. We talk about his 49ers. We talk about my Raiders putting a bow on their tough season. Predictions, hot takes, awards. I gotta say, a fun, fun curveball of a game this week too. 90s edition. You'll see what I'm talking about. And then we wrap it all up with the Monday night questions, which are a little different because there's no Monday night, but there is something else on tap. Ah, you know what I'm talking about. So check it out because it's all here. It is week 18, the end of the regular season. I'm in a good mood. The Sunday night talk with Omar Carmona and me, Patrick Ramirez starts right now. Sunday Night Talk for Week 18. The regular season finale is here. Joining me, as he always does, Omar Carmona is there. We are wrapping up, because the game isn't over yet. We are wrapping up Sunday Night Football. Detroit Lions are just about put the nail in the coffin on the Packers. There's a minute 45 left in the game. And Daniel Dan head coach Daniel Campbell's nose is officially... Um, frostbitten or some sort of shade of dark, dark red, and the <laughs> Packers are looks like they're gonna go home. They're going do you home. Remember, do you remember that one year? I think it was in Green Bay, where it was the coach for the Giants, Tom Coughlin, and his face during a playoff game was like red, like your beer hat. Uh, <laughs> and I, you know, I thought he needed medical attention out there, but Green Bay, <laughs> Green Bay will do that to you. Lambo has a way of really claiming a lot of a lot of skin on coaches' faces. Yes, I have my beer helmet on today because it's the end of the regular season. It's the end of normal regular season football. So I thought I would go as a bit of a celebration, as a bit of a party, because now we're ready for the real party, which is playoffs. So I got my Bud Light and Coors Light to represent the NFC and the AFC as a special tribute. I can't even start to express you. Maybe it's because the Raiders are finally over and done with how happy I am. This season is over. I'm finally glad the regular season is over. Thank God I get it. I got exhausted. I was glad they were done on Saturday. Well, that sounds pretty mediocre, Patrick. Um, uh, I'm getting ready for the playoffs, you know? (laughs) So, It was a long haul. Like I said last week, this has been the most emotional season as a Raiders fan I think I've ever experienced. And if I were to give like, I don't want to give my award, you know, who won the week. I want to burn it on this. But if you want to say who won the season, how about Raiders fans? They stuck with the team. That was a horrible performance. If you're still still a Raiders fan after this season, then yeah, you you, you definitely won the season. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. So, and, and you could extend that to fans of all losing teams this season that, oh, thank God, the season's over. Now we can just watch the playoffs in peace. 
but especially to my Raiders who played a horrific game on Saturday. <laughs> we played so many close games this year and now <laughs> to ca- cap it off, probably the worst game of the year. Uh, Detroit is taking a knee. It's official. It's over. The pack is out. Possibly Aaron Rodgers is out forever. I don't know. I don't know what to think about this. There's so many now, questions. Now, now, one thing, it remains to be seen if this is his last game in, in a Packers uniform. But how about this? Do you think it should be Aaron Rodgers' last game as the Packer? Um, Do I think it should be his last game? What perspective am I taking from this? Am I taking the Aaron, like Aaron I mean, Rodgers' side as a Green I mean, I mean fan? Take the, take the, take, you're a Packers fan, not a Raiders fan. You're a Packers fan. Okay. Do I want Aaron Rodgers back? Uh, my instinct tells me that he's washed, that he's done. Wow. Like this game was bad. He threw three picks. Those weren't a receiver drops. Those weren't tip balls. Those were picks where the safety just had beats on every single one of those. So I, I'm feeling a fresh start if I'm the Packers faithful. Um, I got to say, I wrote this in my notes. Like the Packers in this game just have bad hands. They have bad hands. They're dropping right. balls. Um, they're fumbling the ball. They just they cannot get out of their own way. And in the penalties, two two of the most the dumbest, oddest penalties I've seen in a game that really meant something. This game is your playoff life. And the yeah, Packers had that safe. had that weird penalty at the end of the first half where the Packers guy goes up and swipes the football. <laughs> From a the kicker was gonna do what a forty eight a fifty something yard kick, and he goes and swipes the ball and then he gets shoved and he shoves someone back and then they get a fifteen yard penalty and it's a chip shot, and in in the second half the Packers guy pushes a Detroit Lions trainer, gets ejected. This is completely horrendous. This is a totally undisciplined team, and they're gone. I gotta say, good riddance. At the beginning of this game, I was like. I want, the Packers would be fun in the playoffs. Now I'm like, good riddance. You don't deserve to be in the playoffs with this performance. Now I'm glad the Seahawks are in. Yep. Yeah. I, I, you know, and, and, and Geno Smith, what a redemption for him. You know, he, yeah. he gets his career back on track. And, you know, so it makes you realize maybe sometimes it's not always the quarterback. Sometimes it's the organization that these, these quarterbacks get drafted into, that their true potential isn't realized. And I think maybe... You know, maybe Geno Smith is having that um, that realization in his career. Definitely, he looks great going in the end of the season. I was thinking it was funny that the end of the end of the late games happened to be Seattle Rams and Denver Chargers. <laughs> so, and and Russell Wilson is playing for absolutely nothing. Geno Smith is playing for a playoff spot. What a, I mean, what a weird, ironic matchup to be flipping channels on. There, there's a lot of RIPs going on here, Omar. I'm watching Aaron Rodgers walk off the field on TV on the NBC. He's got his arm around, looks like one of Randall his, Cobb. Randall Cobb. And it looks like they're going to be like, <laughs> it looks like they're just like leaving forever. This is, this is really brutal. This week, week 18 is really weird to watch now. I don't remember ever being like this. Randall Cobb, he he was on that Super Bowl team, was he not, when they did win? I can't remember, was he? If that's the case, then then that was like a like um graduating seniors goodbye. <laughs> like we're never yeah, gonna so see was. see each other again. Let's so what do you think? Is Rogers back? Are we gonna have to talk about this all summer long? I hope we don't have to talk about it all summer long, but I I I, I really think as a franchise. I think if you're the Packers, you want to find your next franchise quarterback. You know, you 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 went from Favre to Rodgers, so that's basically you know what, like close to 25 years of of you know uh, more probably. You know, we're gonna have closer to 30 years uh, of just like consistent franchise quarterback play, and and I don't think you're gonna get that anymore. And maybe it is time to move on. What about the coach? Do you feel the coach needs? No, a, I think I, no, I think no. He's 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 the he's the right coach. He's the right coach for the job. I was listening to an interview during the week of Jeff Van Gundy, the um, 
NBA analyst, former Knicks sure. coach. He had so many funny things to say about media and how we judge uh, teams and players during the season. He said, you know, relating to the NBA, but it relates to any any league. We always say like, oh, it's a player's league. This is a player's league. The players have the most power. It's a player's league. And as soon as, as, soon as something starts going bad with the team, we go, what's wrong with the coaches? Right. <laughs> you know, We had all these funny analogies where when a player – misses two jump shots the announcer goes he's got to stop settling for jump shots i was like yeah because you know what happened you know like we have these weird ways of judging players in the season rogers i think who knows with coaching with management who knows what's going in rogers own head he may be not wanting to ever come back to the packers i think it's time to make a clean break maybe doesn't look happy Maybe he just wants to spend the rest of his life, you know, on psychedelics in some, you know, desert somewhere and maybe you know, all, the, all the power to him. Maybe he. So do you think he walks? Will he ever play again? I think I think that's I think that is a legitimate thing. And I think both with Brady and Rogers, that's something to consider. Will they just walk and just say, you know what? Enough's enough. We're moving on. I think I think even that that's got to be a question that's creeping up in Brady's head. You know who's coming out smelling like roses in this whole thing is Detroit. I wrote down in my notes, they're like, I'm so bummed that Detroit didn't have anything to play for in this game other than spoiler. Like, Detroit is a good team. They're running the ball on third down and getting chunks of yards. Goff heated up. They've got that one does, receiver who is Goff, blazing fast. Does, does Goff come back? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I don't know. The end of the season was really good for Detroit. So I could see a move where he is traded. I could see a move when he come where he comes back. I really I could, Derek, I, I'm fifty does, fifty. Does Derek Carr find himself in a franchise like Detroit? That's uh, possible too, because that is a name that's going to be shopped around heavily. That's got to be the lead off season story going in. I would I would guess. What other what else is there? Because Carr is a hot commodity. It seems like the Raiders are moving on. We'll know right after the Super Bowl because that's when his contract expires. But I think they're shopping him. I think he goes. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, Detroit for a second. I'm bummed that they're not going to be in the playoffs. Dan Campbell turned it around. Jared Goff, they're, they've got their receiver that is blazing, blazing fast on yep. the team. They really dug deep, and they win on the road being down. I'm a I'm, I'm a bummed. big Detroit fan. I'm a big Detroit fan in my way too early picks for next year. Uh look out for the NFC North champions, the 2023 Detroit Lions. Wow, wow, way too early for hot takes. I was pumped in this game when like in the first quarter when Green Bay goes for it on fourth and one and Detroit stopped them. I was like cheering like it was a playoff game. I was excited for Detroit and as it was really, it's really cool to watch them. Like they were really into the game. So kudos to them for playing for nothing than to knock out a division rival. Look at this, Jer- Jared Goff, nine straight games without an interception. I mean, that's not that's not easy. Yeah, yeah, we really buried Detroit early. It goes to speak, or it goes to to talk about the notion that this season is so long now <laughs> that you can be bad in the beginning and turn it around. We should have known something was up, though, when Mason Crosby hits the crossbar on that long field goal. Yeah. Anytime we have a ricochet on something, we got to know something is is not right. Uh, here's one question, going, moving on from the game. Detroit is young. They have that Aiden Hutchison guy oh, yeah. on the defensive side who has had apparently three interceptions this year. Yeah. I can't figure out that guy's eye black. He does this weird Braveheart thing where he has black on just a side of his face. Right. I like <laughs> are there, it. Are there no rules for eye black anymore? Can no, you, no, not anymore. It's it's whatever whatever you feel like. Can you do whatever you want? Can you just paint his face like uh like, I think he should be like uh like in uh, the program. Oh black. yeah, like like the uh like the guy was like the Indian war yeah. paint, then there was a skeleton. I say he should paint it like a member of the KISS army. Oh, I like that. That'd be good. Yeah, what about that? He's got the crazy face paint. So, um, oh, and then Chris Collinsworth. I got to give it to Chris Collinsworth. He came in hot on this game, too. He's pumped up as well. There was that big Christian Watson catch on the Packers, which that guy 
is a legit talent. That Packers receiver. He's great. I, he I think is great. Great. He had that long catch where he gets interfered with and he still catches the ball. And Chris Collinsworth is out of words. He goes, oh. <laughs> That's all he did. He did that and he goes, that from Aaron Rodgers, that ball was launched. Look, it's launched. And he's being grabbed and he still catches it. And Tariko goes, crazy. <laughs> yeah. He, he didn't have anything to say. <laughs> And then lastly, the Packers kill themselves with the dumb penalties. I just, yep. I can't believe that's how you go out. You push a trainer on the opposite team and you're kicked out of your final game. You're ejected. Not smart. I don't get the dumb penalties. So that sets the stage for <laughs> Seattle gets in. They're going to go up against your, your 49ers. You know, last thing that bummed me out on this game actually has nothing to do with the game. Did you say they... They scrapped the NBC. Okay, we got. Hold on, breaking. We have the uh, the lineup. Oh, playoff lineup. All right, let's so let's the see. The first it. game. The first game is Seattle at San Francisco. That's the Saturday early game. Saturday early game. I'm surprised. But that's a 4:30 Eastern. Um, and then because then so there's a night game, Chargers at Jacksonville. Oh, that's that's weird. I thought they would have flipped it. We knew Chargers Jacksonville was going to be Saturday. We just didn't know where. Right. So, uh, Miami and Buffalo open Sunday morning on CBS. Um, Buffalo, uh, Mi Miami at Buffalo, right? Yeah, the afternoon game, the Giants at Minnesota. Sunday night football. I, I'm not surprised at this one. Ravens at Bengals. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, which sets yeah, up. yeah. Monday night football, Cowboys at Tom Brady. How about that? Oh, oh, that's good. That's God. I have so many questions about that game. I don't Monday night. Oh, yeah, I have a lot of questions about putting that on Monday night. That's Dallas at Tampa, right? Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, so that's our first. That's our wild card weekend. I'm trying to think if I would move that lineup. I would move Jacksonville to the early game. And Sunday night, I like that Miami Buffalo as a Sunday night. Although we don't know what's going on with QBs at at Miami, you know who caught a break here is Minnesota because they can play an afternoon game. Kirk Cousins at night is not good, so now right. he's in the afternoon. That is that is a bit of a break. All right, well let's talk games since we're done with the Sunday night game. Let's talk that. Right. Let's go the Saturday Saturday games. We had two this week. We had Kansas City at Las Vegas, the end of the Vegas season. I swear to God, <laughs> Mahomes was half asleep through this game. <laughs> and, and they're still throwing touchdowns. They're still up 10 pretty much the whole game. You know it's bad when the Chiefs are doing silly plays <laughs> to, like, practice. They're doing the silly huddle. And they're still, like, you know, achieving first downs and did stuff. You, how, how much disrespect did you feel there? Right. You, if you're the Raiders, you'd be like, Guys, they're messing around on us. Like, don't we feel bad about this? And the Crosby gets like two penalties in a row, one roughing, one one offsides. Just total mess. And I'm listening to the game on the radio, and it's the Raiders call, and it's to the point where even on a penalty, the announcer just starts laughing. <laughs> There's like, we got a we got a roughing the passer on on Crosby, and the guy's like <laughs> oh, we got a encroachment on the defense. Oh, <laughs> like everybody has given up on this game. And in a uh, Stidham who played okay, he might've won the end of the season for the Raiders because everybody loves Stidham now. Yeah, true. And and then we finally saw the, the Andy Reed poncho was out. He's wearing yeah. this huge chiefs poncho. So they're ready. And in the night game, Tennessee at Jacksonville, I was. I texted you. I don't think I've ever been excited for Tennessee at Jacksonville this much in my life. <laughs> Never. That, that, you know, and that game always seems to be that boring week eight Thursday night game in October. Yeah. You know what this I mean? is a Thursday night game. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So we had that game, which was a really good game. We had two bad offenses. Sometimes you hear like, oh, it's a defensive struggle. This was an offensive struggle. <laughs> Neither of the teams could do anything. Trevor Lawrence, as much as I like him, was not great. He missed open receivers. He wasn't gelling. And it was a big turnover by the T Jacksonville uh, defense that won this game. And I think Jacksonville is my new favorite team. How can you not root for Jacksonville? 
They're young. They turned it around from last year. Trevor Lawrence, second season. He went through the Urban Meyer mess last year. And now he's like, uh, now they're in the playoffs. They're playing with house money. For sure. I can't wait for that. Um, Jacksonville. There's something fun about just Jacksonville being in the playoffs, too. I like it. I love it. I, I, I like that during like a scoring drive, their owner was in his owner's box asleep. I thought that was oh. kind of awesome. Oh, I like that. That's a good omen because, you know, we always get nervous when the owners go down to the field. Right. But if you fall asleep in your I mean, owner's you box, can't, you reverse. cannot say you cannot. The, the coach cannot say the owner puts too much pressure on me. He was asleep in the owner's box <laughs> during a must win game. <laughs> wow. Talk about a rich guy move falling asleep during your team's game. I don't know if you can go more rich guy than that. Sure. You got private jets, limos, entourages. Hey, I fell asleep during my own team's game. <laughs> that's a, that's an owner move. That's a baller move. That was the Saturday games. How were you on Saturday? Did you even watch these games? Because I, I still don't get Saturday football. I did. I did. And I enjoyed them. Um, you know, obviously, the, 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 the Chiefs, there was a point where the Chiefs Raiders was not fun to watch anymore. But it was not. But, you know, I, you know, the thing about going back to the Raiders real quick. A lot of question marks. I, you know, I don't even know where you begin. You know, it's like you, you got to up the defense, but now it looks like you're going to find a quarterback. You know, you, you just can't depend on Devonte Adams and Jacobs to, you know, to, to put the entire franchise on their backs. You know, it, it's got to come from other people. You know, Waller obviously is a great player, but you know, it's like they got the pieces, but, but there's a lot of teams like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, it's just it's a lot of lot of question marks for a lot of teams. Um, I, I anticipate a swift, uh, uh, quick uh, coaching carousel. I, I think we're gonna have uh, coaches pretty much settled within two weeks. Oh, back to RIPs. The regular season's over. That means NFL Sunday ticket is officially. Yep done I'm as out. well I'm free pat i'm done that I'm that's done. it direct tv can i give you my list of direct tv qualms besides the fact that if you want nfl sunday ticket you need a cable package there's no way around it you have to have cable so you got the expense of that then you got the expense of nfl sunday ticket which is not cheap then you've got the four squares on there which is fine there is a delay between the streaming game and the game that is like on like an antenna. Right. And it is not eight seconds. It's like 45 seconds. Last week, I'm watching the Raider game. And my brother is texting me like, great ball down the sideline. I'm like, what are you talking about? We're in a commercial. Right. And I'm like, and it takes me a while to realize, oh, he's ahead of me. And then I have to just turn the phone over so I don't see it. And the text is still popping up on my computer screen and I'm covering it with my hand like this. So I won't look at it, you know, right. I'm like, well, how will we not fix the delay? Like this is ridiculous. So I'm all on board. So long direct TV. You fucked yourselves. I don't care. Yeah. I'm calling. I'm calling tomorrow. Come pick up your shit. I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> We're going to have, it's going to be on YouTube TV. The streaming service is going to be better. We're going to have multiple feeds. We might have, uh, secondary announcers to choose from, right? We, we could choose the broadcast we want. This is going to be, this is going to be the best. So long direct RIP. Fuck direct you TV. direct TV. Get out of here. Direct TV. All right. Back to the early games. Um, Cleveland at Pittsburgh. This meant something to Pittsburgh. They play, they win. Kenny Pickett spotlight. He played okay, but this was a fun game. Pittsburgh wins, but then they're out like 30 minutes later. <laughs> when, yeah. when uh, I forget who won Pittsburgh, really another team question marks, but Hey, I liked, I, I did not mind what I saw from uh, Kenny Pickett. Uh, and with that receiver, George Pickens, that just knows how to make unbelievable catches. He's got that, like that Victor Cruz type uh, 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 coming up, you, you know, Victor Cruz just like made a living when he was with the giants, just big, huge home run plays. Pickens is kind of like that. And I think that next, next year, he's going to be a player to watch. Um, you know, if Najee Harris, you know, gets in great shape and, and, and continues his rise, I could see Pittsburgh 
you know, they, they, they got to get back to having a, a defense, though, because isn't that the, the hallmark of all great Pittsburgh teams? It starts with your defense. And, yeah. and, and I, I think, obviously, Pittsburgh just needs to really revamp their D. Yeah, Pick, Kenny Pickett starting for Pittsburgh next year is a good question. You know what also Week 18 serves as? As preseason Week 0.5. <laughs> you know, this is... This is showcasing talent for next year. Like, are you going to be on this team next year? And also, I'm sure players are playing for some contract bonuses in Week 18. Can they get to 1,000 yards? Can they get their 100th catch, whatever, for bonuses? Right. So Week 18 has all these interesting storylines that really doesn't revolve around necessarily winning a game sometimes. So Pittsburgh wins, but they're out. Then we go to Baltimore at Cincinnati. Cincinnati's playing for the second seed. They win convincingly. Cincinnati looking very scary in the playoffs. Very scary, Patrick. Very scary. Very scary. And then we have a couple of, I don't want to say non-watchable, but completely avoidable. (laughs) Tampa Bay at Atlanta. Tampa Bay loses, and they're still in the playoffs. (laughs) So I don't know what was going on in that game. Uh, Of note, Tom Brady's first losing season ever. (laughs) Is that right? And he's in the playoffs. What was that one year they went like 12 and 4 and missed the playoffs? The year that Tom Brady got hurt, they went 11 and 5 and missed the playoffs. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, which one was was less watchable? Tampa Bay, Atlanta, Houston, Indianapolis, or Minnesota, Chicago? (laughs) because I didn't watch a minute of any of those games. I actually watched a little bit of Houston Indianapolis. I watched and that was interesting. We'll get, we'll get to that. How did you feel about Texans going for the win when they had a chance to get the <laughs> top pick? And it, 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 was that what caused, I mean, if you're the owner, you're like, dude, I'm already going to fire this coach and he's going for a win when I got a shot at the top pick. Now <laughs> looking at it, I don't think it hurts because Texans are going to need to draft a quarterback and Chicago, I think you're pretty confident they're not going to draft a quarterback with uh, Justin Fields. So it, it, right. it seems like, okay, sure, they didn't get the number one pick, but I think they're still going to be able to get their first, you know, their first bite at a quarterback. Yeah, Houston blows the chance to get the number one pick, and which otherwise would be a really fun game to watch because it was super close. This really right. should have been the, as far as a broadcast goes, this could have been the who cares broadcast yeah. like they now should be like say whatever you want be funny say outrageous shit bring in a guest broadcaster too bring somebody bring in a former player we could have done so much more with this and it was it was just regular yeah, but... also the you know the saints uh, uh saints panthers was a bad game yeah, oh that's really, right i didn't watch a minute really, of that either. i didn't really watch much of that but uh andy dalton Jameis winston are they quarterbacks on the new orleans roster next year we'll see yep questions there and then two important games. New England at Buffalo. New England's playing for a playoff spot. They were feisty in this game, but Buffalo pulled through. I think they returned two kickoffs for touchdowns. Buffalo has got, I think, all the karma in the world on their side. You know, they, they're recovering. It felt like everybody is a Buffalo fan, and Buffalo's like, oh, you thought we were good. We're actually I don't want to play. I wouldn't want to play them. No, I think they are the scariest team. Like they've got to be the odds on favorite for the Super Bowl. Them in Kansas City right now. Who do you put your money on? To represent the AFC? Yeah. Buffalo. Yeah, I think I think I would too. Only because I just think they're deeper. Yeah. Yeah. Kansas City, I feel like, has a gear that they haven't gotten all season. Like they're like, you guys should be this much better, and it really hasn't happened yet. This was a weird stat in the Raiders game that Kansas City has the worst red zone defense in the league. That's of course, crazy. Of course, they said that on the Raiders' fourth trip into the end zone and they got three points <laughs> the right. whole, out of four. So I think that stat has since improved. But there's a couple of questions. Kansas City is beatable. And guess who's beaten Kansas City three times is Cincinnati. So Kansas City has a lot of hurdles or a lot of demons to exercise this playoffs. So uh, New England's officially out. Good riddance. They struggled all year long. They're out of there. But that brings us to Jets at Miami. And the Jets start. Joe Flacco is back in the game. Joe Flacco, back in. He's back started. in. But 
not a good, not a good, very boring game. It seemed like a pillow fight. Um, uh, there was talk that the the Dolphins needed a win for their coach. Uh, that he, even though he's been a one year, but you know, I think the ownership was concerned about the just like the skid. You know, they started out eight and three, and and next thing you know, they're eight and eight, needing a win and help to get into the playoffs, which they got. Um, but that was almost a catastrophic uh, 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 downfall from their great start. Remember. You know, when they were eight and three, there were a lot of people talking about threatening Buffalo and Kansas yep. City for, for they the beat AFC. Buffalo. Yeah, and they, they they had a big win. I think they beat Kansas yep. City too, did they not? I can't remember that one. It seems so long ago. Yeah, but, <laughs> that, but, 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 but remember there happened. was there was there was huge talk about the 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 Miami Dolphins and, and Tua. Right. Yeah, Tua big question mark. Like what's gonna happen next week? Is Tua playing? Do we I mean we don't know yet. And the other thing I liked is Dan Marino's on the sideline <laughs> of the Miami yeah. game in a in a blue blazer. You know, you know I, I was thinking a lot of quarterbacks make I saw I saw Marino. I'm seeing Elway and he's apparently still in the chat with replacing, you know, uh, possibly trying to convince Sean Payton to come to Denver. Uh Bernie Kozar I saw was let go by the Browns because apparently he entered a bet and, and he's and he's uh, he's he's a paid employee by the Browns, and so because he gambled, <laughs> he can't uh, oh. he can't continue to work there. Oh, come on, <laughs> come on! Well, did he bet on the Browns? I need to know that. I know, uh, but but it's so just something to think. I you know a lot a lot of these old school quarterbacks. I love the old school quarterback on the sideline. I also liked we we did they did an interview of the Miami quarterback whose name I still don't know. Uh, because he won the game, and they do the the thing I love in post game interviews, where the interviews ask him like, "So, how was the game? How did you feel going into that third quarter?" And the quarterback goes, "Oh, we had a good offense, and uh, blah blah blah." And then someone interrupts the quarterback to say, "Good game." I hate that. I hate when and and yeah. of course the camera pulls over like, "Hey, can't you see I'm doing something right now? <laughs> Don't interrupt me to say good game." <laughs> I hate that. But it's kind of funny to watch. So Miami got in. That's Knox Pittsburgh out. Mm -hmm. And then Carolina, New Orleans was a no watch. I didn't watch one minute of it. Denver, Denver Chargers. I was just checking the score. Um, you know, we already knew that uh, the Chargers are going to be playing next week against the Jaguars. So that wasn't, you know, much of a, right. you know, just get, just rest your players and make sure you come out healthy. Uh, and I think Denver got the win, I think, right? I think they, yes, they did. Yeah. That, now we go into the late games. Um, Chargers at Denver. I didn't know what to do with the Chargers because they were in and then they did the smart thing and they sat their players the second half. So Chargers get the fifth seed. Denver question marks all over the place with Russell Wilson. Sean Payton is discussing. So Denver might have a very active offseason. They need to make some big, big changes. So that was that game. Let's go Arizona at your San Francisco 49ers. Purdy gets a good start. Debo is back. How confident are you in your San Francisco 49ers? We're going to win the, we're going to win the Super Bowl. Wow. We're going to win the Super Bowl and I am scared of Buffalo. But this is our year. I mean, I just just the way this team's come together, the way Brock Purdy is so mature now. I'm just so uh, pleased with the uh, how far the Niners have come. Uh, I have Super Bowl expectations. How about that? Wow. So you have a lot of confidence. You sound very excited, which reminds me of, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me think of something. The season is over oh Ooh. right right i forgot week week three or four you you declared the season is over well you know we started out three and four <laughs> and then we haven't lost a game since but it you know things were it was jimmy g i and i told you i i couldn't stand jimmy g <laughs> we're gonna get to the bottom i don't know why you can't stand him he tries hard i think i think you just needed somebody fresh in there and then you were all in you know I'm happy for you. I really am. I'm really happy that you got a team that you can cheer for and they're probably going to win. They're probably going to win a playoff game. They're probably going to be pretty, pretty good, pretty good threat in the play. Who knows how far they could go? This could be their year. Right. 
Wow, the season is over. <laughs> uh, New York at Philadelphia. No, the Danny, Giants also, no Danny Dimes. No Danny Dimes. Giants smartly did not play their starters, so um, you know they're they're going to be healthy for the playoffs, and and it's going to they're going to need their their best game because that that Minnesota team is tough. Yeah, you think so? You think Minnesota is going to be? I mean, I mean, I, th- I think they're tough. I'm not saying they're the they're the favorite, but you know the Giants are going to need to have a good game. You know, they're not they they can't afford to have Danny Dimes. You know. They, they can't have a, a, a two interception game from him, you know, and expect to win on cannot. the road. Yeah, right? they absolutely cannot. He needs to be on his game. He cannot be the reason they lose. So Philadelphia wins the division. That brings us to Dallas at Washington. I was a little unclear if Dallas had won, would they have won the division? If, 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 the, if the Eagles had lost. Eagles lost out. So if they both won, Philly would have won the division. Yeah. So it didn't really. Okay. So it didn't, it wasn't that, that big a deal that Philly won. Uh, Dallas, probably the biggest question mark of the playoff teams, just looking at this game. Cause yeah, it's a question mark because some, we we've seen their, their, their potential. When, when you blow out Minnesota, like the way they did when Minnesota was riding an impressive win streak, they beat the bills too. and. And you know, uh, uh, Dallas blew them out of the water. Yeah, and it was but, bad from the start. So their Dallas is dropping punts. <laughs> Washington didn't even start Heineke. <laughs> they didn't start Wentz. No Heineke. They have some other guy. Dallas is like you blink your eyes. Dallas was down thirteen zero in no time. And Washington is is missing field goals, and they're still winning. <laughs> Bre- Prescott did not look sharp. He doesn't run. He doesn't scramble a lot anymore. I don't know if you can chalk this this up to just be like Dallas, this Dallas Buccaneers um, uh, Buccaneers game is so fascinating to me. So we'll see how this goes. It could either be the best game of the season or the worst game of the season. That was also the first um, Sunday night game this year. Was that this year? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It was a Sunday night game. That's right. And they lost Dallas lost. Yep. Yeah, I'm ready for this game to be really, really weird. Just weird, weird, weird game. That was oh, that's and it's the early game too. Oh, wait, wait, yep. where is where is Dallas? No, it's the it's the Monday it's Monday night. Monday night. It's Monday night. Oh, oh my God, this is gonna be a weird game. You watch and see. This is gonna be like a five turnover special teams touchdown type of game. Um, and in last game of the afternoon, L.A. Rams at Seattle. Seattle playing. For their playoff spot. Rams were feisty too. I got to give it to these teams that were out. And had no chance of playoffs. That really showed up and played a good game. Big news. Big news from this game. Uh, Sean McVay. May, this may be his last game. as He may be taking some time off of coaching. I saw that. That seems to be a common sentiment. Of people putting out there. That he might. He might take a break. He might have gotten burned out. Like these offensive Maybe. minds get burned out. He's got. He's, he's married like to this like. Eastern European model. He he needs to he needs to relax. Right. He might need to relax and like take a vacation, get centered, you know, take some yoga classes, come back around like like Dick Vermeil. Come back and then um coach again. I could see that he's young. He's too young to be this stressed out. Yeah, we'll see. This is what I liked in the overtime Ram Seattle. Seattle kicks the winning field goal to get into the playoffs or to win the game. And the announcer, as the ball's going through the uprights, yells out, Hope Springs Eternal! <laughs> it was it was hilarious. He was like so pumped that Seattle had a shot. So Seattle is in. Geno Smith, Pete Carroll in the playoffs. Yeah. Who do they play? Oh, they play your Niners. Yeah. They play the Niners. Um, Niners should win that game. Weird stuff happens. Yep. It um, does, it's, and it's playoff football. Weird stuff happens on Saturday know. football. You never know. Yeah, well, those were the games today. I got to say I'm ready for the playoffs. I'm halfway ready for the playoffs and half glad the regular season is over. Okay. You know, I'm ready. I'm ready for it to, to kick off. Like, let's see. Let's see good football. Let's put my Raiders to bed, and then let's just enjoy the season. That's my, my feeling now because it can get very exhausting watching these Raider games week after week. 
All right, so we're going to take a break, and then we'll come back, because I have a weekly game for you, Omar. I really just have to take off this helmet. It's weighing down my head too much. <laughs> I am seriously weighs like <laughs> I had eight pounds on my head. Okay, now I'm back. All right, so we have a weekly game for you. As we do every week, you know, we play a game. This week is no exception. You may remember earlier in the year, we played a game called Guess the Tweet, where you were guessing the tweets of former players, stuff like that. So we're going to do the same thing. However, this is going to be a little different this, this time. You grew up, as I did, in the 90s, right? So we're going to play Guess the Tweet, 90s Hot Chick Edition. Where I'm going to read you a tweet and you're going to try and guess which 90s hot chick said these tweets. Are you ready? All right. Ready. Okay. Well, here we go. Here's the first one. I'm going to read you the tweet. Here we go. My number one parenting tip is survive. That's it. That's the tip. Is this tweet from Reese Witherspoon, Gwen Stefani, or Drew Barrymore. I'm going to say Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon, final answer. My number one parenting tip is survive. That's it. That's the tip. All right. Let's bring up the tweet. There you go. You got it. Reese Weatherspoon was the correct answer. My number one parenting tip is survive. That's it. That's there the you tip. Go. I, I know. I know these these ladies well. Oh, oh, wow. Maybe you're dialed in on this game. I love an oversimplification tweet. By the way, we're like, hey, all you got to do for parenting is survive. It's like, oh, that's it. <laughs> Terrific. All right. Well, you're off to a hot start. I have five of these. My goodness. <laughs> okay. Well, I told you this is going to be an intense game. All right. Second tweet. Someone dies from AIDS every minute. If you're a woman, young girl, or child, that person is more likely to be you. But it doesn't have to be this way. Is this tweet from Tara Reid, Sarah McLaughlin, or Jillian Anderson? I'm going to go Jillian Anderson. Wow, what's your thought process on that? I didn't just really... I. I couldn't imagine the first two saying anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's bring up the tweet. Two in a row. There you go. Look at that. Jillian Anderson is a secretly weird person, I think. You know, we don't hear that much about her, but I think she's odd. I think she's just loony. And somehow, like, it's still cute right now. <laughs> two for two. There you go on the 90s hot chick edition. All right, let's continue. You are two for two. This brings us to number three. I mean, there's a reason Tom Cruise and his team single-handedly revived cinema after a pandemic. Just wow. Is this tweet from Juliette Lewis, Heather Graham, or Gwyneth Paltrow? I want to guess Juliet Lewis. Okay. But I was, it was between that or Paltrow, but I probably got a wrong period. But yeah, Juliet Lewis. There you go. Three for three, Omar. Wow. Look at that. You know what? You know, I love a statement when someone starts it with, I mean, <laughs> yeah, a very Collinsworth thing. Oh, I hate when someone says, I like you ask them a question and they go, I mean, it's the dumb person's uh, strategy for buying time. You know what the smart person's dumb strategy for buying time is when they say, great question. <laughs> and all they use, they're just using it to think of yeah. a response. I mean, drives me crazy. It's like, say what you mean. But I've never really seen it typed in text. So <laughs> extra points, Juliet loses. I mean, Tom nice. Cruise fan. All right, so you're working on an undefeated score right now. 
Two to go. Now they're going to get tough. Next tweet. How do we get all corporations to adopt one standard chemical makeup to their plastics so they can be recycled easily? Ideas? Is this Alicia Silverstone, Daisy Fuentes, or Tia Carrere? Oh, wow. This is a total guess. I want to guess Daisy Fuentes. Oh, is that right? Were you a uh, were you a Daisy Fuentes fan in the nineties? I was growing up. Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. gotcha. All right, here we go. Daisy Fuentes is your pick. Oh, Tia Carrere. It is Tia Carrere. That was a One of my favorites. Wayne's that World. Was a, Wayne's, Wayne's World. World. Yeah. You know, with Wayne's World, I never understood half those jokes until I was much older. You know, I didn't <laughs> like. I, didn't I get, love that. That was even as a kid. I mean, maybe I didn't even really understand the jokes, but just the way they were delivered, I just remember laughing uncontrollably at that movie with my mom. <laughs> I remember, remember the joke where Wayne is like, um, "Led Zeppelin didn't write songs everybody liked. They left that to the Bee Gees." I didn't know what the hell he meant by that until like I was way older. I was like, who the hell are the Bee Gees? You know, stuff, <laughs> stuff like that, I didn't get. That's a great rewatch because there's so many like band references that I didn't figure out. Like the Kung Fu fighting, like rough night, huh? Everybody's Kung Fu fighting. Oh. I, I didn't yeah. know that was a song. Yeah. <laughs> Tia Carrere, 90s, hot chick. Remember her in True Lies? Let's not forget True Lies. Oh, Lies. gorgeous, gorgeous. Unbelievable, Tia Carrere. And now she's trying to get plastics... Recycle. Good for you. All right. Last tweet. Here we go. Let's see if you can go four for five. Me and my husband stand with the people of Iran fighting for freedom. Is this Shakira, Avril Lavigne, or Britney Spears? Shakira. Okay. The tweet belongs to Oh, wow. Britney Spears. <laughs> wow. That, that was interesting. I also like the first reply under her tweet here. <laughs> it's, it's my yeah, husband it's and I. <laughs> Mud flap asshole. I, I, love a, I love a grammar Nazi. Yeah. That was, guess the tweet, hot chick 90s edition. Who was your hot chick? Who was your 90s go-to hot chick for you? There's a few. I, 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 okay, no, there can only be one. In my 90s, it, it's Jenny McCarthy. Oh, I forgot about her. She was, she might be, if you did a power rankings of 90s hot chicks, she might, she might be going away number one. Who else might have been in there? Armin Electra was Armin Electra extremely been in there. hot. I mean, you know, Baywatch was so, was so big, um, you know, but, you know, there were some some young actresses that, you know, blossomed. Obviously, we saw how uh, Drew Barrymore, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Charlie's Angels uh, crew, Drew Barrymore. Mm -hmm. Cameron crew, Diaz might be Cameron uh Diaz. might be a top wow. five in there. Oh, Courtney Cox, Jennifer Aniston. Oh, right. Maybe. Our top three or it's got to be Jenny McCarthy, Aniston. And then I don't know who three would be, but it's got to be those two. Just trading off one and two, I yeah. would think. You know, it's going to be harder and harder to explain to the next generation, Drew Barrymore. <laughs> if I were to tell you, there was this chick in the 90s who was partying. She was crazy. She was taking her top off on Letterman. And she hosts a talk show in the daytime now and yeah. wears, wears a lot of turquoise. That's yeah. the same person. <laughs> yeah. You know, hey. very hard to explain Drew Barrymore to people. Very difficult. You know who mine was? I had two. I had a wholesome 90s crush, and I had a wild one. My okay. wild one was Christina Applegate. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. She was fantastic. Yeah. Like, she would prance around on Married with Children, like, with her, like her belly showing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she was, like, Beautiful. all slutty and stuff. And my brain could not take in that information it was like what the hell is this woman is this woman are these is this what women are going to be like when i'm older like you know right. i don't know what to think 
yeah like did, do, do you just like make out in cars like when when do i get these chicks like you know i was dumb that's enough to good, think that's i would a, that's a that's a good one yeah that was a window in my into my psyche but my wholesome crush was a little deeper cut my wholesome crush was melissa joan hart from sabrina the teenage witch that was the one like i thought like oh i, I like if i played it right i could i could go out on a date with this one that was my brain. Like, you know, like I would plan out my conversations with women beforehand because I knew they were never going to respond to me. So I was like, all right. So when you ask a question and they give you a one word answer, you better start thinking of a follow up. <laughs> so I thought if I struck up a conversation with Melissa Joan Hart, Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, I thought I could have got her to the mall for a slice of pizza. You'd have a shot. You'd have a shot. I thought I had a shot. I thought I had a shot with her. That was my... Those were, my, those were my two 90s hot chicks. I had other ones, but those two were like my number ones. Wholesome and wild. Very cool. Well, that brings us to the awards, as we do every week. First award of the week, final award session of the regular season, the Overbearing Parent Award, which is always a tough one to choose, I think, because it's really subjective how we play these. So I got a few. I got... If there was a father of the Houston Texans, <laughs> this, would, just... this would be the, the car ride home where it's silent. And then at the stoplight, the father goes, you blew it. <laughs> what did right. you do? Yeah. We had the number one pick. Yeah, I, I was. I, I don't think there's any other one that could get this award aside from the owner of the Houston Texans. <laughs> <laughs> then I got another nominee. How about the dad of Daniel Jones? Because he oh. didn't play. And the dad's like, you see, they need you, son. <laughs> they yeah. see you are integral to this team. You better get your head in the game. And then I got a random Dallas Cowboys dad. So this is the dad of a player who's maybe second string, but somehow gathers the team after the game and has his own post game talk with the team. You know, I played on sports teams. There were some dads that were way too involved. And they would have these little one-on-ones with you and be like, dude, we didn't play. <laughs> We're not in this game. So I went with a random Dallas Cowboys dad, also as my overbearing parent. So who do you got? Who was your overbearing oh, parent? It's, it's, it's the Texans owner. Come on. I mean, <laughs> Texas I, the, owner. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the way his look on his face, that, that was just, you know, wow. And it made yeah. that, who knows if that was what actually cost Levy Smith his job, but. Because, you know, if you're an owner or if you're a GM, your season starts now. <laughs> you're like, right. hey, this is our time to shine now. Now we can right. now we can finally make some moves. So if you're like, <laughs> we got the first pick, it's just that whole whole game. You just got to be saying, like, what are you guys doing? Just run the ball. <laughs> like, who cares about this game? This is Indianapolis. Who cares? We could get the number one pick. We could trade the pick. We could right. use it for somebody. We could do anything with this. What are you doing? Now Chicago's got it. Great. Uh, next award. This is the hot take award. I have some red hot ones this week. So hot that I don't even want to spoil them. I want you to go first. Oh, well, my hot take award. I'm, I'm going to go now. Uh, uh, it's going to be a Bills 49ers Super Bowl. Oh, wow. Bills 49ers Super Bowl. I got two hot takes. Number one. Tampa is out in the first round of this playoff. I can see that. You're not they're bad. You're not, Losing record. Yeah, you're not you're not out of pocket here. But Brady can beat this Cowboys team. That's all That's I'm That's true say. too. The Cowboys are beatable. Absolutely. Second hot take. Russell Wilson retires in the offseason. He's done. He's done. He quits. He says, I don't care about the contract. I'm walking away. He's had enough. I say Russell Wilson is retiring. I can see him mentoring a, a young player as a backup. Staying on the team? On a team. Really? I can, yeah. Mm, okay. I say he retires. He's he's going to go full Jake Plummer. You know Jake Plummer like lives on a ranch now. Yeah, I mean, okay. Russell yeah. Wilson goes way into his other interests. That's my hot take award. Next award, the cringeworthy award for the week. I got, looks like I got three of them. One obvious one, Houston blowing the number one pick. 
I got, what's my other one here? Oh, <laughs> this was good. I'm watching the Seattle uh, Rams game. And the announcers are talking, you know, they're, they're for Seattle. It's on Fox. And they're running these ads for a Fox show that's called Alert, Missing Persons Unit. And at some point, the announcer goes, after the promo, I'm skipping the primetime game. I'm watching Alert, Missing Persons Unit. Nice. <laughs> he was, he's like, I'm skipping, I'm skipping football tonight. I'm watching Missing Persons. I thought that was cringeworthy, and I loved it. Award for me. What was your cringeworthy award for the week? You know, I would just say the the Dallas Cowboys uh, season finale play. You know, <laughs> that's pretty good. It just it was just horrible to watch, and and uh, I I don't think even though it was a game that they already knew they they were in the playoffs, you know, still for them not to get anything going heading into the playoffs, I don't think that's a good sign. Do you think there's a chance where let's say Tampa Bay does what Washington did today? The game starts and Dallas is just out of sync. They're out of it. They're down 13 0 in the first. They're flat. So they lose again. Is there a word where this is McCarthy's last game? Can they fire McCarthy? Yeah, they could. From a bad playoff loss? Yeah, I, I they could. And then all of a sudden the Sean Payton door opens to talk they better, about it. They, they better act quick. Yeah. Well, no way Sean Payton's doing a thing to these playoffs. And he, he's got his pick of the litter right now. He can yeah, and I think anywhere. and I think maybe and I think maybe that was the drive to meet with Denver right away like that. You're kind of telling all these teams like, you know, hey, I'm I'm talking to people. You Denver, know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the moving the pawn to that first square in chess. We're like, right. oh, the game has begun. I'm like, I'm not going to do anything with this pawn, but the game has right. begun. All right, I'm in right. the market. Yes, yeah. There's a world, and if you're a Dallas fan, I I think you're like. Say you go down two touchdowns in the first quarter, all of a sudden you're very conflicted. You're like, yeah, let's lose by 30 so we can fire McCarthy. <laughs> you know, I think you got to be conflicted thinking your team, they're like, yeah, maybe they can lose. Maybe we want you to lose. Cringe worthy. Uh, okay, would you rather award? I've got multiple ones for you this week. Right now, would you rather? Would you rather be Houston or Chicago right now? Uh, I'd, I'd much rather be uh, Chicago because I do think that uh, Justin Fields has a uh, um, a, a a high ceiling. He's going to be a franchise quarterback. So now, if you build around him, now that you found your centerpiece, build around him. Let's build a defense in Chicago. You know that that reminds us of those Mike Singletary uh, um, uh, led defenses and. And you know when Erlacher was was, was playing, uh, let let's bring back a defense like that. And I I think um the the sky's the limit for for Chicago top pick in the draft. Go go get yourself the best D lineman you can. When it comes to teams backpedaling into the playoffs, would you rather be the Tampa Bay Bucks or the Baltimore Ravens? I'd rather be I. I... <clears throat> I'd rather be I'd rather be the Bucks. I, I think I have more faith in the Bucks right now than I do the Ravens. What's up with the Ravens the last month and a half? Is Lamar but, even going to play next week? Yeah, he's. He, I think he's. He will play, but they just they just they. It's a team that just never really. Even when they won, they didn't seem to impress this year, right? Yeah, they really did, and, and Lamar is doing this weird holdout during the middle of the season thing where. I think he right. could play. He's his own agent. And then this was brought up to me earlier. Lamar has no endorsement deals. Right. His, I, I, like, what is going on with Lamar? I wonder in five years down the road when, say, Lamar plays one more season, he's not as good, he doesn't get a good I, – I wonder if we're going to have the Allen Iverson comparison with Lamar. Be like, you know, that guy was awesome. He never really got on the right team. He never really got in the right offense. He never really committed himself to a team. I wonder if we're going to have that conversation. And then, like, if he goes on a good playoff run, then we're going to be like, okay, Lamar's back. Like, he has been so up and down this year. Yeah. I don't, and I, I'm not threatened by the Ravens at all. No, not at all. So I'm with you. I'd rather be the Bucks. It just seems like there are less turmoil with the Bucks. 
Uh, last would you rather. I know you don't drink anymore, but I think you still have thoughts. Bud Light or Coors Light? I'm a Coors Light. I was a I was a big Coors Light guy um, uh, before. Yeah, uh, when I was drinking. So love love me a cold Coors Light. All right, you go Coors Light. I'm in agreement. Next award. This is always fun. This is the Ethan Hunt. You've never seen me upset award to the Tom Cruise movie that most represents this week in the NFL. Okay, I went with the very first. Mission Impossible. All the characters, the table is set, and when that movie ends, you're like, bring on the sequel. I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, just start it next week. And I think that's what the playoffs are, going to be the sequel to our regular season. I'm going to say right now, uh, The Outsiders. Look out, you know, mm. we got the socias, the, the, you know, the the blue bloods of the NFL um, that are, that have been dominating. Um, but, but look out for some outsiders. Look out for a, uh, the, the winner of that Jacksonville uh, Chargers game to, to be a threat to the Chiefs maybe down the road um, in the playoffs. So so I, I think um, there, there's some teams that could be sitting as outsiders that maybe have a chance to win a game. Outsiders? Who's your favorite outsider? Ooh, um, uh, it's got to be, I don't know, man, who would be my favorite? Soda? Like, no. here's... Like, uh, let me look at them. Outsiders right now, I'm going to go outsiders are, well, both Chargers and Jaguars are outsiders, I would say. Um, are Dolphins outsiders? I think they're outsiders when you when you back into the playoffs like that. Yeah. I don't want to just pick all the lower seeds. Like, who actually has a shot? Are the Giants outsiders? <laughs> is Minnesota an outsider? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, this is tougher than I thought. Like, who's the outsider? Like, I already said Jacksonville is going to be my favorite team in the playoffs. Yeah, I know. And I think I think that's why I focused on that game. Could you imagine the winner of that game may go to Kansas City and you think, you know, they may be able to pull something crazy off, you know, that mm -hmm. that, that, that in which they end up in a championship game. Yeah. Yeah, my outsider is Jacksonville, and I want to put – Gosh, I want to throw the Dolphins in there for some reason. Like, what What have they had five different quarterbacks play for them this year? Yeah. <laughs> the coach is fun. Miami, like, who doesn't love Miami? Like, for some reason, we all love Miami. Maybe Tua plays in a limited role. We still don't know what his status is. Everything is so up in the air. I got to say, if the Chargers get hot and they're in the AFC Championship. I'm telling you. I'm loving it. I want to see the Chargers gel at just the right time. Eckler yeah. is awesome. Herbert is awesome. Mike Williams. A lot of outsiders. Got that Chargers Jaguars game might have me, might have me torn in two different directions. When was that game again? Saturday night. Yeah. Put it down. Saturday night. I'm sitting down. I'm watching that game. Great game. all the way through. Um. So we went with the outsiders. That's a good pick. Last award. Who won the week? Slash. Who won the regular I, season essentially you, the winner of this week's award actually won the whole season after the emotional uh monday night uh and the days after uh with damar hamlin the nfl fans won the week and in turn won the season they just showed how much they cared damar hamlin's toy drive just skyrocketed millions of dollars and and and, and now that money is going to be dispersed to uh, different charities and it's so nice to see, and 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 the the NFL fans won the won the year. We also still have like <clears throat> with when it comes to all the Demar Hamlin stuff that we had this week. Once we saw the reports of him getting better and recovering, it was almost like a huge exhale. They were like, "All right, now we can focus and concentrate and look forward to the games this week." We decided to cancel that Bills Bengals game. Which extenuating circumstances, I, I think that was the only option. And like, okay, we'll do a neutral site. We'll base the seeding off of playoff uh, winning percentage. Is that fair? Maybe. Is it not fair? Maybe. But these are extenuating circumstances. And also, no one's going to be like, hey, we want to play. <laughs> no one's going to be that guy who says right. like they should have played. And then we had the the online hate where like the NF where people were hating on the NFL. Be like they the coaches had to stop the game. NFL wanted. To, I can't see an NFL executive saying like, "You guys got to get out there and play." I can't see that happening. I'm sure it was 
considered, but I can't see that happening. And then when it comes to the the Hamlin, you know, we saw that it was the uh, Bills trainer that did the CP, the life saving CPR. Right. Meta meta um, medical staff was right there right on the there. scene. So we got the if we're gonna just ask the questions, the who, what, when, and now we're all to the why. How did this happen? Right. Athlete, right. young man. I don't want to go all conspiracy, Pat, but I'm, shouldn't this would be a, a question like, how did this happen to a young, healthy person? When we, you know, it could happen to anybody. Um, but is that the, is that the question? If if that's the question, then every single player on the NFL is like, holy shit, am I gonna? Is that gonna? Am I next? But I think I think that's why it was bigger. That's why we we talk about how things are bigger than football, and I think it can make anybody, you know, question their mortality. You know, uh, uh, to die doing what you love, what you what you were doing since you were a kid. That's that's got to be, you know, it, it's poetic. It, it, it it's romantic. It's tragic. You know, all, all in one. So, um, I think I think that it, it was so shocking um, and so emotional. Mm. Um, but definitely, I, and I thought the NFL did a great job on 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 you know how they. Uh, delivered the message on on obviously his safety, his health, um, but just you know showing uh, compassion and sympathy. That was that was inspiring as well. Yeah, it really it really had that moment for like forty eight hours, seventy two hours, where we were we were really concerned for like what the hell happened, like what yeah. is going on out there, and then no touch and go. Yeah, yeah, and then just the question of like we just need a. Uh, an explanation of the why is this uh they did discover a heart defect that he had oh this is actually this runs in his family something that would put us at ease to know that oh this is <clears throat> a reason that this could have happened this is like because if they were saying like oh it's a random event that would scare the hell out of everybody from youth sports all the way up so um i'm still very concerned with, like how does this happen to a young healthy Adult man, this is very odd. Um, we need medical professionals for that. So Conspiracy Pat wants to know what the why to it. And I'm sure that's being looked into, but scary stuff. And I'm, I'm glad he's getting healthy because we're like, okay, now we can enjoy the season again. This is okay. So very tricky early part of the week for NFL football. I'm glad it's better though. And now the bull, the Bills have all the momentum in the world. You know what they have? You know a team gets extra momentum when the team has a midseason tragedy. You know, like when there's like a college and, you know, like they have an assistant coach um, goes in the hospital or something. They're like, we got to win for such and such, you know, and yeah. now they have a purpose. This is now the Bills have extra, extra jet fuel in yeah, their tank sure. because of this. There's going to be the the uh, number threes are going to be everywhere. The number threes on the jersey. A team, of, a team of destiny, you know, that's team of be destiny. It's a, it's yes, gonna that field. they're going to meet your 49ers in the Super Bowl. Destiny against Purdy. Chalk it up. Go. You know what kind of bothered me that I always think is funny yet stupid? It happens in the NCAA the most. Like, you know, they have the bench of basketball players, and at the very end of the bench is a priest. <laughs> yeah. You know, every once in a while, a team has a priest on their bench. Yeah, yeah carrying, I... carrying a crucifix and a Bible. <laughs> right, right. It always bothered me in some weird ways. Like, oh, we have a priest on our team. All right, tangent alert. That brings us to the Monday night questions for week 18. Uh, but wait a second, Omar. There is no they don't have Monday, Monday night, night because we have done all the Monday nights. So that changes it to the wild card weekend playoff questions. You may remember the old ESPN Chris Berman primetime music. So for you, here are your playoff questions. Are you ready? Ready. Bill's or Dolphins at Bills first up. What former Bills or Dolphins player do you want to see on the sideline of these games? I want to see uh, Jim Kelly and Dan Marino staring uh, across, oh. uh, uh, across the field at each other. Oh, that would be good. 
Would you like them to like wear their jerseys or like maybe go casual wear, team oh, wear? A nice, what do you both of them in a nice in a nice suit. Uh, oh. a nice a nice suit. Business. This is business. Oh, Ravens at Bengals. Will Lamar play? And what do you expect out of him? Lamar will play, but uh, uh, Joe Burr way too good. Uh, his Bengals are, are are peaking at the right time. I like the I like the Bengals in a convincing win. Did you see that inter uh, press conference Joe Burrow did? And he's wearing the biggest white turtleneck sweater. <laughs> yeah, the man has style, and I don't think he's doing it on purpose. I think he legitimately dresses like that. I think he likes those clothes. He's fantastic. <laughs> Chargers at Jaguars. Ah. Does, does the winner of this game have any shot in the next round? Yes. yes oh, I really? I would not. You would not be shocked if they go into Kansas City after this and and, and get a win there. What about after that? What about yeah. Conference Championship? Does uh, does the Chargers or Jags have a any, shot at the any, Super Bowl? Any time one of these two teams runs into the Bills, it's going to be Bills. That brings us to the NFC questions. Dallas at Tampa Bay. Can Dak get it together? Just straight up. Can this guy put together a playoff win? He's God, got you're the, wincing. God, you look you look very he's uneasy. Got, he's got the potential to do it, but I don't think he'll do it. I still think Tampa Bay wins their third straight against Dallas. Oh, really? You're going Tampa Bay over Dallas? Mm -hmm. Jeez. Okay, now what about the Tom Brady question? Next round. Bucks? playing whoever they get uh, play can they win a com uh, divisional no no so dallas one and done yep god i'm sad just hearing that come on <laughs> new york giants at minnesota Ugh. all right omar let me give you some volume put your life savings on daniel jones or Kirk Cousins? Oh, that's hard. <laughs> that's why we I'm, do this. That's why I brought I'm the music put, in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my savings on this one on Kirk Cousins. Um, just you know, because only because Kirk Cousins is gonna be throwing to Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson. So I, I, I like that. Wow. So you see Kirk Cousins coming through on the offensive side? I do. I could see this game being one of those weird defensive battles where it's going to be 16 to 12, 16 to 13, and neither quarterback plays good, but it's a defensive thing. I don't trust either of these quarterbacks. I really don't. Oh, and, and a personal plea, please, NFL, let the Giants wear their old school uh, 80s, 90s Giants uh, uniform. <laughs> oh, that's true. You know, we could go like a surprise, like the team comes out of the locker room in a uniform they haven't worn all year. There you go. Extra, extra intimidation, motivation. And final playoff edition question. Seattle versus your San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco. Cakewalk for the 49ers, yes or no? Yes. Cakewalk. Oh, really? You're so confident. Unbelievable. Purdy three touchdown passes? Something like that. Mm. Wow. Debo Samuel's back. McCaffrey, the, the, Seattle just doesn't have it uh, with this team. Wow, you got to be feeling pretty good about yourself. I well, am. that was the playoff edition Saturday, Sunday, Monday night playoff games this week. For Omar Carmona, for me, Patrick Ramirez, that was the Sunday night talk for the end of the regular season. Omar Carmona, see you in the playoffs. That is it. That is the show. That is the regular season. Oh, my God. Playoffs. I'm pumped. I'm excited. The season is on fire. I put my Raiders to bed. Now I can go to the actual party. Sounds mean saying that. But I love football. Don't forget, if you're new to the Running the Back channel, give it a subscribe. It helps. It really helps, people. The channel grows. All my stuff is on there, too. My stand-up comedy clips. My other shows, which is opening scenes. The Sunday Night Talk, going right now. It's all on there, not to mention my running the back interviews, too. So give it a subscribe. 
I want to thank Omar for joining me this week. I want to thank everybody for listening and playoffs. Is your team in? Is your team out? How pumped are you? Who's your sleeper pick? Who's your sentimental favorite? Bud Light or Coors Light? These are the questions we need to answer. Starting Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So many games. Thank you for listening, everybody. I will see you next week.